Hello everyone, welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs. Before I start with today's topic, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. And if you want the free PDF of this session, you can join the Telegram group. The link is in the description below. We provide the free PDFs on that very group. Now in today's session, we are not going to cover different topics, different questions. Rather, this entire session will be dedicated to a report which has recently been released by RBI. So RBI came up with the financial stability report. And today we are going to cover that report in detail. So let's get started. First of all, talking about what is a financial stability report, who releases this report and how many times is this report released. So financial stability report released by, is released by RBI and it is published bi-annually. By bi-annually, I mean it comes twice a year. Last we discussed this report in July and now we are covering the report which was released in December end. So what does this report tell? It's a financial stability report. So it tells the situation of our financial system. How stable is our financial system? What are the different risks to the system? How resilient have the financial institutions been? How, what regulatory measures, development measures have been taken to develop the financial sector at large? So jitni bhi risks hai mari financial stability ko, jitne bhi measures liye gaye hai development ke liye, regulate karne ke liye financial sector, so, वो सब इस रिपोर्ट में रिफ्लेक्ट किए जाते हैं सो इट टॉक्स अबाउट द ग्लोबल एज़ वेल एज़ द डोमेस्टिक पोजीशन एज़ फार एज़ द फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम्स आर कंसर्न्ड देयर इज अ कमिटी अ सब कमिटी अंडर द काउंसिल कॉल्ड फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी एंड डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल सो दिस वेरी काउंसिल कैरीज आउट द एंटायर असेसमेंट एंड देन द रिपोर्ट इज प्रिपेयर्ड व्हिच इज रिलीज्ड बाय आरबीआई सो फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी एंड डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल जो है ये असेस करती है फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम में क्या-क्या रिस्क्स है क्या कैसा रहा है फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम इस टाइम पीरियड में क्या डेवलपमेंटल मेजर्स लिए गए क्या रेगुलेटरी मेजर्स लिए गए so, और वो सब एक रिपोर्ट में प्रिपेयर होता है और वो रिपोर्ट है फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी रिपोर्ट ये जो काउंसिल है दिस काउंसिल वर्क्स अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस एंड व्हाट इज इट्स रोल इट्स रोल इज टू इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज द मैकेनिज्म व्हिच विल हेल्प इन मेंटेनिंग द फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी इट स्ट्रेंथेंस द फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी बाय यूजिंग डिफरेंट मैकेनिज्म्स देन देयर आर डिफरेंट रेगुलेटरी बॉडीज व्हिच आर वर्किंग इन द फाइनेंस एज़ फार एज़ द फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर इज कंसर्न सो मेंटेनिंग द कोऑर्डिनेशन बिटवीन दोस बॉडीज ऑल दैट इज द रोल ऑफ दिस वेरी काउंसिल इट बेसिकली प्रमोट्स द फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर डेवलपमेंट so this report has different chapters which we'll be covering one by one sabse pehle hum cover karenge rbi governor's view point on the financial system which has been presented initially in the report then we will cover the three chapters of this report focusing on the macro financial risks then focusing on how resilient are our financial institutions our financial system and lastly we will discuss the different regulatory measures which have been taken focusing on a survey as well so let's start with the rbi governor's view point before that i want to tell you that this is the 24th issue of the financial stability report so mr shakti kan das ne apna view point express kiya hai financial system mein ke bare mein is time period mein july se december tak so what is his view point he says that it is nearly 2 years since we are facing the pandemic and this pandemic has created a lot of problems but the economic activity has endured the waves of pandemic economic activity ne uske sath acha deal kiya hai and that has been possible because of the exceptional support which rbi which are the financial regulators which the central governments the state governments have provided so government central bank aur baki regulators ke support se economy acche se face kar payi hai pandemic ko that is what he says we have discussed this in the previous report as well we discussed about this in the trends and progress of banking report as well so there might be different points which are covered in the trend and progress of banking report which will get covered here as well both of them deal with the banking sector with the financial system so and both of them talks about the same time period of pandemic so there might be different points which are similar in both the report but this report is quite useful for you when it comes to the rbi descriptive questions when it comes to the rbi interview so you should be aware about the financial stability report 
Now he further says that the second wave of pandemic, after that the India, uh, the economy started recovering, but there is some new problem which is emerging. So second wave ke baad economies ne recover karna shuru kar diya tha. India also started recovering, regaining strength, re emerging as a strong player. Consumer start, confidence started building up, businesses started turning optimistic that okay now the vaccinations have come up, now the things will improve. But when this outlook was improving, we are seeing new problems emerging like that of the new variant of COVID. So it can pose various new problems for the economies as well. And again, the support from the governments, from the central banks end might be needed. Inflation is also posing up to be a major problem. But strong supply side measures are being taken to deal with inflation. We have seen food prices, energy prices, how much but different measures were taken to bring it back within the tolerable levels. But still, inflation is a concern. Then, financial institutions in India have remained resilient. And how is it possible? One is obviously that the government has supported, the central bank has supported a lot. But the banks, the financial institutions have remained, has may have maintained enough capital and liquidity buffers which have helped them mitigate the shocks. So, whatever problems came, that enough capital maintained, thi, enough buffer maintained, the buffers have helped the in financial institutions to deal pandemic. Se deal karne mein. Then, during this time period, we have started leveraging a lot of technology. We have accepted the digital platforms a lot. So, although we are moving on to technology, but new risks are emerging, that is the cyber attack risks. And to deal with that, we need to improve on our infrastructure, on our data security, on coming up with more rules in order to improve on this area. So, our cyber attacks are very cyber crime is very high. We need to deal with this, we need to develop infrastructure and sound rules. Develop karne ki hai. Indian financial system has stood up well and remains well prepared to meet the funding requirements of the economy. So, jo enough capital, liquidity buffers we maintain, karte aai hai, enough funding requirements have been maintained. So, that will help the economy in the tough times which are likely to come in near future again. And RBI is always ready to provide the needed support. We have seen its accommod it has continued with its accommodative stance for a longer time period now. And it is still willing to provide the support if the economy is suffering, if economic growth needs to be uh, maintained, if financial stability needs to be maintained, the RBI is willing to provide the support. This is all what our governor had to say through this report. Okay, so this is a broad overview of how this report Kya kya pe report basically focus karegi. So let's move on to the first chapter of this report, which is macro financial risks. Kya risks hai global economies ko, kya risk hai specifically India ko, all that we are going to discuss through this very chapter. So the global recovery which was happening lost momentum in the second half of 2021. Jo recovery ho rahi thi economies ki, usko fir ek setback hua and we are seeing it, it is losing the momentum. And what is it impacted by? What are the risks? The risks are the risk of the infections, the COVID variants coming up. Second is the risk of supply side disruptions. Export import have been impacted. Production have been impacted. Supply is not there and demand is there. The prices are rising. Then there are persistent inflationary pressures. We are seeing inflation in India also. I discussed in detail about the inflation in US that how it rose to the 30 year high level. So similar is the situation with the other countries as well. And because of all these reasons, there are shift in the monetary policy stances. So these are all risks that emerge. Kar rahe Infections, ka dar, supply side disruptions, inflationary pressures, monetary policy shifts. And when you are changing the monetary policy, it can impact a lot. Like US cha is changing its monetary policy. It's uh, tapering the program which would, it was running. I discussed about this. And when it does so, it increases the interest rates. The investors investing in your country will withdraw the investments. Okay, that will impact your trade. That will impact your currency value. So currency is depreciating. Foreign flows are getting affected. In the trade among the countries is getting affected. So all these are the risks that are emerging. And that are showing that the economy is losing the recovery momentum which it had earlier. So this report uses some variables which capture this slip. This is the economy recover recovery. So this slip up slip down 
ओके सो दिस ये जो स्लिप हो गई इकोनॉमी की ग्रोथ इसके कुछ वेरिएबल्स हैं जिससे ये चीज प्रेजेंट हो रही है जो इस रिपोर्ट में बताए गए हैं लेट्स डिस्कस दे फर्स्ट इज द गुड्स ट्रेड बैरोमीटर सो दिस इज द गुड्स ट्रेड बैरोमीटर वी कैन सी द सडन ड्रॉप सो गुड्स ट्रेड बैरोमीटर बताता क्या है सी इट कम्बाइंस वेरियस इंडाइसिस विच आर रिलेटेड टू ट्रेड एंड इट शोज the world merchandise trade that is happening and what is going to be the likely trajectory in near future so world trade kitna ho raha hai kaise ho raha hai aane wale future mein trade ki kya volume rahegi wo ye barometer batata hai so this barometer rose to 22.4% between april to june so aap dekh sakte ho june mein ye high point pe tha and then we suddenly saw a drop in this so the decline what does the decline shows it shows that there is tapering of the import demand jo goods demand kiye ja rahe the jo goods ka trade ho raha tha wo kam hua production disrupt hui hai supply disrupt hua hai and bahut se major goods hai like automobile semiconductors jinki import demand kam hui hai jinka production supply kam hua hai so that is what the goods trade barometer indicate the level of trade that is happening worldwide and we are seeing a major drop in this second parameter which they talked about is the baltic dry index what does this index tell it tells the shipping charges of the dry bulk commodities so if the they are right the index is rising that shows that there are more shipping charges being charged and that is an indicator of what it indicates that the changes are happening in the demand and supply because people are demanding the products they are being मैन्युफैक्चर्ड एंड सेंट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट द शिपिंग चार्जेस आर इनकर सो ये बताता है कि मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में जो इनपुट्स यूज होते हैं उनकी डिमांड बढ़ रही है इट इज व्यूड एज अ इंडिकेटर ऑफ इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी बिकॉज चेंजेस इन इंडेक्स रिफ्लेक्ट सप्लाई डिमांड फॉर इम्पोर्टेड मटीरियल यूज इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में मटीरियल यूज होंगे उन्हें आप डिमांड करोगे तभी वो शिप होंगे सो ये इंडेक्स इंडिकेटर है इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी होने का and what we saw that this index what was at its highest in october 2021 but then we saw a sudden drop so aap dekh sakte ho kitni high pe tha aur hame sudden drop dekhne ko mila that means the economic activity is getting affected the demand and supply are getting affected the third indicator which they talked about is the global economic surprise index see there are economists and they do different forecasts about the economy and then comes up the actual data so when you compare this data with what the forecasts have been it might act as a surprise element like you expected the economy to grow but actual data shows that it has not so that is a portrait through the global economic surprise index it is an index that compares incoming data with the forecasts which economy economists do and what happened was that during july august and september it went into the negative trajectory सो ये नेगेटिव चला गया जुलाई अगस्त और सितंबर में सो यू कैन सी दिस नेगेटिव साइड और राइट सो नेगेटिव रीडिंग क्या बताती है इट सजेस्ट दैट द इकोनॉमिस्ट व्हाट दे हैव प्रोजेक्टेड वाज नॉट एक्चुअली करेक्ट एज पर द इनकमिंग डेटा सो उन्होंने एक पॉजिटिव चीज सोची थी और इकोनॉमी की जो ग्रोथ हुई या जो जो भी फोकास्ट हुए थे वो एक्चुअल में नेगेटिव अलग टू हुए तो इट सजेस्ट दैट द बैलेंस बिटवीन Uh, it suggests that economic releases have on balance been lower than consensus meaning that agents were optimistic about economy jo bhi forecasters the unhone expect kiya tha ki economy improve hogi lekin actual data ne show kiya ki nahi hui tabhi ye negative aaya so that is showing that the economic growth or the recovery which was happening went into a slip down okay now talking about it further so the slowdown is happening even in countries where vaccination rates have been high it's not this that the countries which have which are not vaccinated are suffering because of the pandemic in even the countries where almost whole population is getting vaccinated there also these problems are emerging and for the emerging economies the economies like india there is even the constraint that we are not able to fully vaccinate the people also so ye problems hain jo emerge ho rahe hain these are some of the risks now moving ahead further tightening of global financial conditions superimposed on domestic inflation on elevated domestic inflation has roiled the emerging economy so jo inflation ki problem aa rahi hai iska bahut negative impact ho raha hai emerging economies pe 
See, because of the inflation, like if you take case of US, it's an advanced economy. There also inflation is happening. So what is happening because of that? The price pressures are there. The countries are changing their monetary policy stance, tapering of the East program, which way they were following. Wo monetary policy apni or tighten kar rahe or strict kar rahe policy rates bada rahe When the policy rates over there are changing, then the outflow of capital is happening from these emerging economies. Like if US is increasing the rate, from India, the outflows are happening because of which the emerging countries' currency is depreciating. US is appreciating, but emerging countries' ki currency jo hai, wo depreciate kar rahi hai. And these are all the possible impacts which are happening. The investors are withdrawing their investment from these emerging economies. The equity flows are becoming more volatile. The bond markets are doing not that very good. So this is the impact of inflation risk which is uh, emerging. Then Omicron has casted the shadow again on the global growth prospects. So Omicron has a problems pose kar raha hai. The GDP is getting affected. Okay. And uh, the jobs will take, the growth will take years to reclaim. Global demand has weakened again. The GDP growth has lost uh, a major percentage point. Then the near-term outlooks remains clouded. Global growth projections have been trimmed by multilateral agencies. The growth projections are going to the negative side of the time that the scenario is not good for the time. Omicron, again, the problems are likely to emerge like we have faced during the entire year. Moving ahead, an important factor that has uh, reshaped the that is said to reshape our landscape is the climatic change. So climate risk is the new risk which is emerging which needs to be dealt with. Climatic risk if you are not taking care about the environment, about the climate, it is likely to have a negative impact on uh, that will be showed through inflation affecting growth. So the climate change is also like to trigger more disasters and that can have a major impact on your financial stability. So climate risk is something which needs to be taken care of. Then the financial and the businesses serv business services seem to be withering the pandemic. But financial or business services better kar rahi hai as compared to our uh, manufacturing and the consumer services. They have weakened and e-commerce is doing well. Its demand has risen. So obviously we have shifted a lot to the online platforms because of which we are seeing the rise in the e-commerce. But still manufacturing and consumer services are facing headwinds from your supply side disruptions which we have. Moving ahead to the domestic position, although all these risks are not just for uh, other countries, the ones we discussed, it's applicable to India as well. But certain points have been discussed again under the domestic position. So local restrictions which were imposed were eased and the growth started reviving aided by the vaccination in India. Okay, jo vaccinations ke waise, wapas humne dekha ki growth hona shuru hui. Indian economy expanded by 8.4% between July to September. The GDP for first time exceeded the, uh, have exceeded the pre-pandemic level. So, jab se pandemic shuru hua, tab se, ab ja ke pre-pandemic level se bhi highest point pe pohachi thi hamari growth. More recently, the high frequency indicators have indicated that there is some loss in momentum. But humne phir dekha ki loss in momentum haya hai. Um, the Omicron is posing risks now for India as well. The COVID is posing risk for India as well. And when other countries are impacted by COVID, they are trading with India. Its spillover effects will be seen in India as well. The pace of recovery remains uneven across sector. Inflation formation is there. Okay, then there is a disconnect between real economy and India's equity market. We have seen India's equity market rising suddenly although the real economy was not doing well so when the indian equity markets and the growth in the economy are not moving in the same pace that is an indicator that the financial stability can be hampered achanak se equity market itni upar pahunch gayi economies to grow kar nahi rahi economy mein to problem hai to achanak se wo niche bhi gir jati hai and we see the volatility which we are actually facing then omicron haunts the near term prospects now this was the first chapter on macro financial risks now moving ahead to the second chapter which talks about financial institutions soundness and resilience so jo hamari financial institutions hain jo hamare banks hain jo hamari nbfcs hain wo kitni sound hain kitni resilient hain kitni strong hain so different indicators are there which will help us in assessing the performance of the banks and the nbfcs so first we will cover the scheduled commercial banks 
what has been their performance so first indicator which we have picked is credit growth scheduled commercial banks ki credit growth kitni hai the credit which they are providing the loans and all which they are providing so scheduled commercial banks credit growth has been inching up during the current financial year so aap dekh sakte ho scheduled commercial banks ka ye march 20 purple indicates march 20 September in uh, and purple, then the blue indicates September twenty. This is yellow one is March twenty twenty one, and this is most recent September twenty twenty one. So if you see, you see the scheduled commercial banks credit growth has risen a bit, right? So in this rise, the most loans have been extended or the most credit has been extended to the industrial areas. then the personal loans have been granted and then service sector advances to so major industry related credit growth hui hai now moving ahead to the next indicator that is deposits growth so credit ki to humne growth dekhi deposit ka kya raha deposits growth moderated see people started holding money as a precautionary motive that's why we see the deposits growth moderating you can see the scheduled commercial banks the growth has moderated it has reduced a bit okay this is the scheduled commercial banks so jo deposits mein increase hua bhi hai wo current account and saving deposits mein hua hai and uh, because it's easy to withdraw money from those deposits as compared to your other term deposits because people are facing in uncertainty so they want money as a precautionary motive so deposit deposits ki growth moderate hui hai then talking about asset quality how good are your assets are they turning a lot into npas the lesser the npas the better it is so scheduled commercial banks gross npa as well as net npa net npa is when we account for the provisions as well so both of them have declined so if we talk about the gross npa you can see a slight decline okay the yellow one is a bit higher value and the recent is 6.9 reduced a bit then the nnpa ratio it has also reduced a bit to 2.3 right so asset quality improve hui hai thodi si then talking about the provisioning coverage ratio that means how much provisions are you setting aside against the bad loans agar future mein bad loans ho jaye to uske liye pehle hi aap alag se money set aside kar rahe ho ki nahi so provisioning coverage ratio shows how much percentage are you setting aside so that has moved up a bit from 67.6 to 68.1 ye hum dekh sakte hain thoda sa increase hua hai matlab hum zyada provisions maintain kar rahe hain against the bad loans so that provisions will help in case the loans started turning bad moving ahead to the next indicator the capital adequacy that means how much capital are these uh, banks maintaining against their risk weighted assets jo aap risky way aapke assets hain unke against aapko capital maintain karni hai कोई भी फाइनेंशियल क्रंच आए कोई भी एनी काइंड ऑफ फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम अराइजेस देन दैट कैपिटल विच सपोर्ट यू लाइक द कैपिटल बफर्स बीइंग मेंटेन बाय द बैंक्स एंड इंस्टीट्यूशंस हैव हेल्प देम ड्यूरिंग द पैंडेमिक राइट सो द स्कड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक्स हैव मेंटेन्ड मोर कैपिटल द रेशियो हैज रिजन टू अ न्यू पीक ऑफ 16.6% सो वी कैन सी अ बिट ऑफ राइज इन द कैपिटल मेंटेन्ड बाय द स्कड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक्स अगेंस्ट देयर रिस्की एसेट्स then moving to the next indicator of earnings and profitability so the profits after tax have recorded a growth jo private sector banks hai public sector banks hai, we have seen their profits growing the return on assets the return on equity they have risen so earnings and profitability has improved for the banks this is what this report has to say so ye hamara ho gaya scheduled commercial banks ke indicators unka assessment इसके साथ साथ स्कड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक्स के लिए मैक्रो स्ट्रेस टेस्ट्स भी कंडक्ट किए मैक्रो स्ट्रेस टेस्ट्स वर आल्सो कंडक्टेड फॉर द स्कड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक्स व्हाट इज अ स्ट्रेस टेस्ट लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दिस विद अ सिंपल एग्जांपल यू ऑल आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर आरबीआई सेबी एंड सिमिलर एग्जाम्स ओके यू टेक मॉक टेस्ट्स व्हाई डू वी टेक मॉक टेस्ट इट्स बेसिकली हेल्पिंग अस टू असेस आवर परफॉर्मेंस दैट इन केस वी विल फेस द एक्चुअल एग्जाम how much will we score what are our weaknesses so that we can work upon in order to improve hum aaj test lete hain taki hame pata lag jaye ki agar kal hi hamara test hua to hum ha kitne marks aa jate hain hum kahan kahan lag kar rahe hain kaun se area mein work karne ki zarurat hai so aise hi banks ki test hota hai ki agar koi negative position aayi koi economy ki koi stressful situation hai suppose koi pandemic aa gaya so stressful situations mein check kiya jata hai ki banks ki jo existing position hai abhi jo jis 
तरह से वो प्रिपेयर्ड हैं और ऐसी कोई नेगेटिव सिचुएशन आ जाती है तो वो उसके साथ कितने अच्छे से डील कर पाएंगे सो स्ट्रेस टेस्ट इज कंडक्टेड हाइपोथेटिकल हाइपोथेटिकल सिनारियो इज क्रिएटेड and the performance of bank is tested over there to see that when the when actually that kind of situation will arise whether bank will be able to withstand it or not so these scenarios include unfavorable situations like a deep recession some kind of financial market crunch financial market crash and then the position of the banks is tested credit risk market risk liquidity risk ai koi financial crisis ai wo bank face kar payega ki nahi so the resilience of scheduled commercial banks balance sheet to the unforeseen shocks which arise have been assessed using the macro test which have been conducted so baseline scenario or adverse scenarios mein ye test conduct kiye gaye hain okay baseline scenario is when you are keeping constant certain parameters and then you when you are making them more basically more severe ki aur negative situation aayegi us situation pe bhi test kiya gaya so baseline scenario and more adverse scenario इन सब में बैंक की पोजीशन को असेस किया गया है सो व्हाट हैज द असेसमेंट सेड स्ट्रेस टेस्ट की रिपोर्ट क्या रिवील करती है द स्ट्रेस टेस्ट से दैट द जीएनपीए रेशियो ऑफ ऑल स्कड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक्स मे इंक्रीज टू 8.1% बाय सितंबर 2022 अंडर बेसलाइन सिनेरियो एंड फर्दर टू 9.5% अंडर सीवियर स्ट्रेस सो स्ट्रेस टेस्ट ने इंडिकेट किया है कि आने वाले अगर टाइम पे कोई स्ट्रेसफुल सिचुएशन आती है तो स्कड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक्स के एनपीएस बढ़ जाएंगे बेसलाइन सिनारियो इज वेन यू आर कीपिंग स्टडी द इकोनॉमिक वेरिएबल्स लाइक योर ग्रोथ योर फिजिकल डेफिसिट टू जी टीपी रेशियो योर इन्फ्लेशन सो हम एक स्टडी रेट लेके चलते हैं तो थोड़ा सा नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट होगा थोड़े से एन बढ़ेंगे और सीवियर सिचुएशन लेंगे तो उसमें हमारे एन और बढ़ जाएंगे सो दिस इज वॉट दी स्ट्रेस टेस्ट हैज सेट देन common equity tier 1 ratio how much of the core capital is being maintained against the risky assets the core capital include your equity capital disclosed reserves like your retained earnings so core capital hai so this ratio might reach 12.5% under baseline scenario and decline to 11.9% so it it, uh, it may reach this much by september 20 under baseline scenario decline to this and this 11.9 11.2 in medium and severe stress scenario so common equity jo hum maintain kar rahe hain jo capital maintain kar rahe hain wo hamari kam ho sakti hai although it will remain above the regulatory minimum minimum humne 5.5 percent ka maintain karni hai itni to hum kar hi rahe hain hum in fact zyada capital maintain kar rahe hain the banks are maintaining more capital than required but still in a stressful scenario that capital might be used up and we might be able to maintain a lower level of capital this is what the stress test say then talking about the capital which we are maintaining against our risky assets so it is also likely to decline from 15.4 to 14.7 and 13.8 in the respective scenarios but the regular it will up be above regulatory minimum so hame crar 9% maintain karna hai isse to hum upar hi maintain karenge still ek फॉल आएगी उतने सी आर ए आर में जो हम मेंटेन कर रहे हैं उतनी कैपिटल जो हम रिस्की असेट्स के अगेंस्ट मेंटेन कर रहे हैं देन दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट द स्कड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक राइट नाउ कमिंग टू द प्राइमरी अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स अब हम आते हैं अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स में सो दे हैव विटनेस मार्जिनल क्रेडिट ग्रोथ एंड देयर सी आर ए आर हैज डिटोरिएटेड स्लाइटली सो इनकी क्रेडिट ग्रोथ मार्जिनल हुई है कम हुई है सी आर ए आर में इनका डिक्लाइन आया है इनके जी एन पी एन एन पी ए रेशियो राइज हुए हैं सो वी सी अ डिक्लाइन इन देर सी आर ए आर वी सी अ राइज इन देर एन पी एस सो दीज आर नॉट गुड इंडिकेटर्स देन वेन दी स्ट्रेस टेस्ट वर डन दे हैव रिपोर्टेड दैट दीज बैंक आर लाइकली टू फेल इवन इन द बेस्ट आइन सिनारियो जब इनका अभी ही हम देख रहे हैं कि पोजिशन अच्छी नहीं रही है तो अगर स्ट्रेसफुल सिचुएशन आई तो उनकी पोजीशन और नेगेटिव हो जाएगी राइट सो वी नीड टू वर्क अ लॉट ऑन दी प्राइमरी अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स देयर पोजीशन इज ऑलरेडी नॉट गुड एंड इन स्ट्रेसफुल सिनेरियो इवन इन द बेसलाइन सिनेरियो देयर पोजीशन विल डिटोरिएट अ लॉट मूविंग अहेड नाउ टू द एनबीएफसीज सो वी हैव सीन एनबीएफसीज रोल इंक्रीजिंग ओवर टाइम दे हैव अ लॉट ऑफ इंटरकनेक्शंस विद द बैंक्स दे आर एक्सटेंडिंग अ लॉट ऑफ क्रेडिट सो वी नीड टू work upon the nbfc is a lot let's see what is their position so the aggregate credit which they extended stood at 27.4 lakh crore so kafi credit nbfcs ne bhi economy mein dena shuru kar diya hai loans to the industry have been the largest part of their credit portfolio so scheduled commercial banks ne bhi major loans industry ko diye hain 
NBFCs may be followed by personal loans and then services and then agriculture. In terms of credit dispension, which has have been done by NBFCs, which NBFCs are giving most credit? सबसे ज्यादा क्रेडिट ग्रोथ में कौन सी एनबीएफसी हेल्प कर रही है दी एनबीएफसी दी इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड द क्रेडिट कंपनीज एंड द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फाइनेंस कंपनी सो जो एनबीएफसी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फाइनेंसिंग करती हैं इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड क्रेडिट कंपनीज हैं दे आर हैविंग अ प्री डोमिनेंट शेयर इन द ओवरऑल क्रेडिट व्हिच इज बीइंग ग्रांटेड नाउ कमिंग टू सम ऑफ देयर पैरामीटर्स सो सीआरआर ऑफ एनबीएफसी इज 26.3 एट द एंड ऑफ सितंबर व्हिच इज अ मार्जिनल राइज फ्रॉम मार्च सो मार्च के मुकाबले सितंबर 2021 में CRAR improve hua, okay. Return on assets also improved to seven, 1.7 from 1.3 earlier. So return on assets improved hua. GNPA of NBFCs declined. So we can see a fall in the NPAs and uh, reflecting a standstill on asset classification prevalent then rose to reach 6.5% at the end of September. So GNPA ratio of NBFCs jo September 2020 में डिक्लाइन हुआ था ओके इट 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 नॉट डिक्लाइन नाउ इट डिक्लाइन इन सितंबर 2020 रोज सडनली टू 6.5 परसेंट सो एनपीएस कम नहीं हुए एनपीएस बढ़ गए हैं वो लास्ट ईयर कम हुए थे बिकॉज द रिलैक्स्ड पॉलिसी एनवायरमेंट प्रोवाइडेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट रिलैक्सेशन इन बेसिकली पुटिंग द एसेट्स ऑन अ स्टैंड स्टिल नॉट क्लासिफाइंग देम एज एनपीएस व्हेन दैट वाज टेकन बैक द एनपीएस स्टार्टेड राइजिंग and the stress tests indicate that they will be negatively impacted by liquidity shock so liquidity issues aayenge inki stress tests ne ye report kiya hai all right so kuch indicators nbfcs ke acche rahe some indicators are good but npas indicator is not that good then there is a lot of interconnectedness in the financial system the banks are related to the nbfcs so the financial institutions are related to each other they have extended loans to each other borrowed and lent to each other invested in each other so a lot of bilateral exposures are there they have invested or they have lent to the same sector or to the different sectors as well so the exposures which are existing have had an upswing in the first half year of 2020 2021 since first half of the 2020 2021 so hum bilateral exposures mein इंक्रीज ही देखते आ रहे हैं इंटरकनेक्टेडनेस आपस में इंस्टीट्यूशन की बढ़ती आ रही है एंड दिस इज प्राइमरी ड्यू टू द इंक्रीज एक्सपोजर विद स्कड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक टू एनबीएफसी एंड टू हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज स्कड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक और एनबीएफसी और स्कड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक और हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज के बीच काफी इंटर रिलेशन है लॉट ऑफ लोन्स है लॉट्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट है and there uh, is a lot of interconnection with the asset management mutual fund as companies mutual fund as well scheduled commercial banks ka sabse zyada largest bilateral exposure hai okay the scheduled commercial banks have had the largest bilateral exposure though it remained lower than the value which existed pre pandemic the shares of nbfcs and housing finance companies slipped marginally the share of asset management mutual funds in bilateral exposures increased so kis mein hamara increase hua hai kis mein decrease hua hai all that is represented over here intersector exposures okay if i talk about that alag sector mein aap borrowing lending kar rahe ho investment kar rahe ho so asset management companies followed by your insurance companies were the biggest fund providers sabse zyada fund different sector mein diye hain insurance company aur asset management company mutual fund ne aur so sabse zyada fund borrow kisne kiye who have been the major receiver of the fund the nbfcs followed by the housing finance companies so this shows a bit about the bilateral and the intersectoral exposures which were there among different institutions so this was all about the second chapter from where we can con conclude that scheduled commercial banks have done well despite of pandemic while urban cooperative banks and nbfcs asset quality has been dented so humne dekha inke npas mein rise aaya hai stress tests indicate that the banks can withstand the shocks better while urban cooperative banks and nbfcs present a more varied picture economy is recovering credit demand is rising banks we are ensuring enough capital and we still need continued attention in the interest of financial stability so jo ye new risks emerge kar rahi hain unko dhyan mein rakhte hue hame aur dhyan dena hai financial stability ki taraf so this was the second chapter and now we move on to the last chapter of this very report so the last chapter 
is on the regulatory initiatives what measures have been taken by rbi sebi other bodies government in order to ensure financial system ensure financial stability and develop our financial system so alag alag regulatory measures liye gaye hain yahan main detail mein discuss nahi karne wali hu हम लोग ओवर टाइम सारे मेजर्स डिस्कस करते आए हैं जो भी स्टेप आरबीआई लेता है जो भी स्टेप सेबी लेता है वो सब हम डिस्कस करते हैं सो दे आर द रेगुलेटरी इनिशिएटिव हैव बीन टेकन टू सपोर्ट द सिस्टम आई गिव यू फ्यू एग्जांपल्स देर आर वेरियस एग्जांपल्स कवर्ड इन दिस रिपोर्ट आई मैंशन फ्यू ऑफ टेम एंड आई ऑल्सो टेल यू दैट इन विच सेशन आई कवर दिस सो इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच दो सेशन यू कैन गो इन वॉच दैम So, मैं बस मेंशन कर देती हूँ कि क्या रेगुलेटरी इनिशिएटिव्स लिए गए हैं सारे नहीं थोड़े बहुत मेंशन कर रही हूँ एंड दोज इनिशिएटिव्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन वन ऑफ दी अदर सेशन अगर आपने वो नहीं देखा तो आप वो सेशन देख सकते हो सो वन मेजर वॉज सेशन सेशन ऑफ लाइबोर लाइबोर वॉज पोजिंग प्रॉब्लम सो रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन दैट फॉर इम्पोज फॉर आर यू कैन गो एंड वॉच जुलाई डे फाइव सेशन फॉर दिस then the deposit insurance the amount can be claimed up to 5 lakh was made a time bound that within 90 days same the thing will happen an amendment was brought in the dicgc act so we covered it in the august day one session okay these are the initiatives which are being taken okay i am discussing them one by one then financial inclusion index was introduced so that we can get an idea of the extent of financial inclusion that is happening in the country we covered it in august day nine session then transfer of loan exposures and certain rules related to the securitization of standard assets we covered this uh, new set of changes or directions brought in by rbi in the september day 12 session then scale based framework was revised for the nbfcs covered in this session of october rules related to opening of the current account were into introduced they were revised so august day three session covers it and then november week one document so document is provided to the enrolled students there i have mentioned what changes were brought in then two schemes were launched by rbi the rbi retail direct scheme and the integrated ombudsman scheme so in order to ease the government securities market for the retail investors in order to ensure the better redressal of the com- customer complaints these two schemes were launched so we have covered it in november day 5 session if you have not watched them do go and watch those sessions then talking a bit about fintech so we have seen a lot of growth of fintech what factors have contributed to that growth in india See, there is a lot of funding provided by the venture capital, private equity. So, ये सब funds हैं जो हमारे I net worth individuals से raise करके startup type की companies में invest किए जाते हैं. Or this is invested in companies which are doing bad and you want to improve on their management and make them run profitably. Then we have there has been an increase in the internet, smartphone penetration, new uh, processes have emerged like ई के वाई सी ई साइन डिजी लॉकर यू पी आई सो ये सब चीजों ने फिनटेक को एक बड़ा बूस्ट दिया है राइट देन कमिंग टू नेक्स्ट इज द स्विंग प्राइजिंग मैकेनिज्म सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल द स्विंग प्राइजिंग मैकेनिज्म इन अक्टूबर डे टू सेशन सो स्विंग प्राइजिंग मैकेनिज्म इंट्रोड्यूस किया गया म्यूचुअल फंड से डील करने के लिए इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट स्टेप विच हैज बीन टेकन पी सी ए फ्रेमवर्क वॉज रिवाइज फॉर दिस क्रीड कमर्शियल बैंक वी कवर्ड इट रिसेंटली इन नवंबर सेशन इसके बाद पीसीए फ्रेमवर्क जो है वो एन के लिए भी इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ राइट सो दीज आर मेजर स्टेप्स एंड आरबीआई हैज बीन इंपोजिंग अ पेनल्टी ऑन द पब्लिक सेक्टर बैंक्स प्राइवेट सेक्टर बैंक्स फॉरेन बैंक्स स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक्स एन बी एफ सीज अ लॉट ऑफ पेनल्टी हैज बीन इम्पोज वेन दे आर कॉन्ट्रोवीनिंग दिवेंशन डायरेक्शन जो रूल्स रेगुलेशन से उन्हें अधर नहीं करोगे अधिक तो आर बी आई पेनल्टी लगाएगा सो so, जुलाई से नवंबर के बीच आर ने इतनी ज्यादा पेनल्टी लगा चुका है सो so, a lot of rules and regulations are not being followed so to enforce them penalties are also being imposed from rbi's end so ye kuch regulatory measures hain jo hamare financial sector ko develop karne ke liye alag alag regulatory bodies leti aayi hain there are many more in the list you should be aware of at least some then at the end of the report they have a systemic risk survey so different respondents have expressed their views on the risks to the financial system so alag alag respondents ka ek survey liya jata hai it was a 21st round of this survey where uh, different risk parameters are assessed global spillover macroeconomic uncertainty financial market mein kitni volatility hai institutional vulnerability general risk so various parameters are used under this risk 
and it is tested that what is likely scenario of this risk so global under global risk we have different sovereign risk commodity price risk under the macro economic risk uh, the domestic inflation which is happening the current account deficit is which is happening the fiscal deficit these are some risks which are assessed under the financial market risk interest rate risk liquidity risk foreign exchange risk is assessed under institutional risk we assess the regulatory risk the cyber risk the operational risk and under general risks we have terrorism climate risk and all such risks so ek survey hua tha ki ye sari risks ka scenario kya hai india mein and what we receive uh, what has been the assessment assessment says that all these risks were medium in magnitude so medium level raha hai risk ka india mein bahut zyada high nahi hai ye risks and whatever high risks are there they are because of the global and financial market so jitni bhi high risk hai wo financial markets ki wajah se hai but the overall scenario of the risks in india is medium in medium magnitude hai india mein risks in sari hi risk ka ye us survey ne denote kiya hai and what are the major sources of risks for india india ke liye major risks kon kon si hai is survey ke hisab se The major risks are commodity prices. हम लोग देख ही रहे हैं commodity prices कितने बढ़ रहे हैं domestic inflation कितनी ज्यादा है then the equity price volatility we are seeing suddenly the prices are rising a lot then falling a lot okay asset quality deterioration the problem of stressed assets then the credit growth and cyber disruptions so ये सारी major risks है India के लिए although the overall scenario is medium in magnitude but the major sources of risk for India are these sources. then two interesting uh, charts have been represented as per the survey, conclusions of the survey one was the prospects of indian banking sector so aane wale time mein indian banking sector ka kya scenario rahega ye bhi test kiya gaya tha is survey mein so this chart shows that there is considerable improvement in the sentiment among respondents when asked about the prospects of indian banking in the year ahead aane wale time mein hamara banking sector aur improve hoga ye respondents ne kaha hai so if you see the purple one denotes the most recent assessment okay and the yellow one denotes the april assessment so april mein is test ne kaha tha ki डिटोरिएट होगी बैंक की पोजिशन एंड नाउ इट हैज सेड दैट मोस्ट पॉपुलेशन ऑफ दिस वेरी सर्वे ग्रुप दे हैव सेड दैट मार्जिन इंप्रूवमेंट विल बी देयर मार्जिनली इन दिस वेरी प्रोस्पेक्ट ऑफ इंडियन बैंकिंग सेक्टर सो पहले कहा था कि डिटोरिएट होगा अब मेजर पोर्शन जो है इस सर्वे ग्रुप का वो कह रहा है कि पोजिशन बैंक की आने वाले साल में इंप्रूव होने वाली है बेटर प्रोस्पेक्ट है देन when they were asked about uh, how much time will it take for india to fully recover from the covid pandemic so 63.9 around 64% of those respondents have said that it will take nearly 1 to 2 years to recover so respondents ka manna hai ki hamari risks bhi bahut zyada nahi hai okay hamara aane wale banking prospects improve honge aur hame ek do saal hi lagne wale hai recover karne mein pandemic se so now when the uh, new variant of covid is emerging and it is again posing the problem for the country let's see how uh, successful this survey proves to be so this was all for today's session i hope this discussion on the report was useful for you all the things are clear to you with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much